We might be drunk, we might be drunk As long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk Raise a glass, let's talk shit Pet peeps, Rex, and a bit Maybe drunk, we might be drunk Yeah Ha! Hey, hey, here we are, folks It's We Might Be Drunk, what's shaking? Good to see you, man You too, it's summertime uh, it's boiling hot out there in Manhattan. Are you doing spots and shorts later? No, I got a fucking tuxedo in my book bag there. But no, I got jeans and a t-shirt. But I was wearing shorts all day, and then you put on jeans. It's one of these these months you need a shower right when you leave the house. It's a lot of showering. I hate it. And then you kind of over soap. Yes, now you're dry and flaky. I hate it. Thank God we're white or we'd be ashy. No offense to the Jewish people. But, uh... Wow, I got an offensive black joke and an offensive Jew joke in there. <laughs> what? Um... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but, no, yeah. It, it, you, oh, I think we're on a show that later tonight together. Stand? Yeah. Yeah, I'm on that one. Oh, that's usually pretty good. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I had... Oh, yeah, they say that the crime rises with the heat. Why is that? Well, I think you're agitated. I think people are worked up. Like every do the right thing and all these movies, like uh, uh, Dog Day Afternoon, it's always like a heat wave, you know, or or uh, what's the Son of Sam heat wave? Interesting. Yeah, maybe places like Alaska just have lower crime rates. Ah, oh, although I bet Detroit's they do. got a very high crime rate. Oh, uh, yeah, and it snows there. Yeah, good point. I don't know. Yeah, nine shootings in 24 hours on July 4th. Crazy. Crazy. And it sucks because the fireworks confuse you. <laughs> That's true, it's yeah. It's annoying. Right, right. And uh, the the pets hate it. The pets hate it. My cat is on edge. My cat's like a meth head. It's like a nom, nom vet. <laughs> it's annoying. I was in the, the village, and I'm leaving the cellar, and the dude just shoot. They're like shooting off fireworks. Yeah. It like almost hit me. What? Like, people get blinded that way. Wow. Like in the, in the, the park? Right out of Ben's Pizzeria. What? Yeah. Damn. They were screaming. I'm like, get the hell out of here. What was it? A bottle rocket? A Something Roman like, candle? I, don't, I couldn't differentiate. Oh, uh, yeah. Such a, you're a city guy all the way. We we had bottle rockets out there in really? the woods. Oh, my God. Yeah, we would hold Roman candles, try to shoot each other. Were any of the kids assholes where they would like like be like, ah, like they try to fuck with you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then there was always that one kid with one finger missing, and there was one kid- Did who, you have a friend with a missing oh, finger? Oh, for sure. For sure. One kid I knew would pop him in his mouth. Kids were nuts. It was the 80s. But yeah, good time. One Damn. time a kid threw a like a cherry bomb at me and I couldn't get out of the way and I remember I, I looked down and it was on my feet, like right at my feet and it didn't go off and I was like, "Ah, oh, it's a dud." And then it went pow and I, my ears went ee, and I thought I was deaf. But I was all right. <laughs> you're in a fucking you're in platoon all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see guys in the distance like <laughs> Dude, uh yeah, it, it I'll tell you. All right, speaking of that, I got to peeve. Please. Wow, we're coming out of the... We haven't even had the drink yet. Okay, we'll pour the drink, uh, as I tell you, because I'm excited. I, I, I need a drink today. <laughs> I got a weird one. All right. So I'm going all summertime bliss. I love summertime bliss. I don't even know what this is. It's something grapefruit, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, it might be blood orange. This is a fizzly wine in a can. I love it. All right. It's a spritz. It's basically an Aperol. Jesus Christ. I've never had it either. Hey, you've not tried this? No. All right, let's do it. All right. I love the sound. Let's do it. Ah, Cheers. Sounds like my dad driving. <laughs> Woo. I got a scent. That's good. Ooh, yeah. It's funky. It is funky. I feel like I'm at a pool in, in uh, Florida. Mmm. Here's a peeve. <sighs> It's it's gags where like I I don't get this as a joke where it's like you and another person and they fuck with you and start laughing like that's like a serial killer to me that's not oh, like oh yeah like yeah. like the person where it's like just you two and they have a bottle rock and they're like ah <laughs> and you're just yeah. like you got me I guess you right just, you know right. what I mean it's like the joke is on me because I I want to have both my eyes yeah yeah good point like you you flinched I hate that guy who does the <laughs> and then I'd be like, "Well, what are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, you flinched." I'm like, "Well, yeah, I thought you were gonna hit me in the face." It's like, what is this battle training? I, we're having <laughs> I a slice of pizza. It, I hate that. And uh, ugh, a fucking friend of ours did to me the other night. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna say his name too because I'm mad at him right now. All right, hit Will Sylvance. He's uh, a friend of mine, but he does this shit. 
I'm walking the street. I'm looking at my phone because I'm trying to like see how much time I have until I can make it to another spot. And he just goes, give me all your money. And I'm like, ah. And he's like, you're racist. And I'm like, you ah. don't give me all your money. <laughs> like, is that... Oh, that's a bit. That's <laughs> a racist. bit. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got the mask up, too. He wears his mask all the way up to, like, with, to yes. his eyes. I'm like, you look like a robber. Right, right. You, he wears all black also, yeah. by the way. And the mask is up. Of course. And he said, give me your money. What do you want me to do? <laughs> give me your money. And then, and then I was like, ah. And he's like, I got you. And I hit him. And he was like, he was like what's your problem? I'm like, I'm reacting. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's not a bit. It's, it's not, not a, a joke. There's no twist. Will does this where he'll do he thinks this is funny. Like he'll do jokes that just torment you. Yeah. Like I remember one time I was at the cellar late one night. I had a gig the next day at the fly out for. He takes he takes my phone. Oh yeah. And my phone's got my wallet attached to it. So oh, I've got like my credit man. cards and shit. So I'm like, ah, is that someone see my phone? I don't know where I put it. And everyone's like, Oh shit. Literally everyone at the cellar is looking for my phone. Uh huh. And it's, I swear to God, an hour go by. I'm like, fuck, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'm going to have to, like, borrow someone else's phone, cancel all my credit cards. I'm going to oh. have to print the boarding pass somewhere. I don't have a printer at home. And after, like, literally an hour of me just being like, fuck, uh. he's like, got you. And everyone's like, why would you do that? That's not. <laughs> I've never heard the side of Will. This is blowing my mind. I've done the road with Will because we used to do oh. the Aziz gigs together. And Will just, he gets a kick out of fucking with you. And, like, look, sometimes it's funny. But sure. But there is a time when I'm just like, that's not a joke. You yeah. just made me miserable for an right. hour. Like <laughs> right. this, you took some of my time on Earth and you made it bad on purpose. Yes, yes. <laughs> Man, what a psycho. I, I had the guy in high school who would hit you in the nuts and he'd be like, gotcha. Ah, and you're like, that's a pain. It's painful. Where Where's the joke? And that's when it should end in high school. Yes. In high school, it's like you're not a fully developed person. It's annoying. I hated this one too, the purple nurple. They just oh. like twist your nipple and you're like, how about just having a conversation or developing a personality? They can't do it. They got nothing, so they have to resort to violence. And that's you're they're getting a reaction technically, <laughs> so I guess they feel better. It's funny. It's like, have you seen any movie? You're the guy everyone yes, hates. Yes, exactly. You're the bad guy in every movie. <laughs> I know the the ear flick, the purple nurple, the credit card swipe. The credit card swipe I'll take because it just go. You go woo. Ooh, it's not like a painful. You have credit card swipe me. That's why I let it slide. Because <laughs> I'm, well, you let I'm it guilty. Slide, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the oil check, the goosing, whatever you want to call it. That one bothers me less than the the nipple thing is actually painful. Oh, huge. Yeah, that sucks. I hate that feeling. So yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. That's, that guy sucks. Well, I love Will, but that I love is... Will too. But it drove. Uh, I. It's not a gag. No, 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 no. And I could see the phone hiding for like five minutes, but an hour. It was an hour. That's excessive. There was staff looking under, like oh. looking under chairs, or like maybe it slipped behind a thing. And I'm like, geez, I'm so sorry, guys. I had to apologize to the wait staff oh, for the comedy geez. seller. But here we are talking about it. Although, wait, actually, that's my peeve. That guy. You know, we're also talking about Hitler a lot, too, by the way. <laughs> Here we are talking about it, so it must be something. No, no, it sucks. We talk about Bin Laden all the time. One of Hitler's friends, do it for the story, man. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know, he made a name for himself. Damn, this is pretty good. The first sip was weird, but it's going down easier. It's a... Uh... This is these are dangerous. Yes, because this doesn't. This tastes like a soda. It really does. Yeah. This is a nice hot summer day drink, which it is. I can't tell if the can look is classy or feminine. I think it's pretty feminine. All right. All I don't right. think we look cool drinking these. No, no, they're thin and pink. All right. <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere with that one. <laughs> like my dick? <laughs> that, that shirt, it looks okay with the shirt. Okay. Because you're wearing a Hawaiian, you're wearing like the like chill guy. Right. Sunglasses, a shirt, you can get away with. That's true, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, uh, my name's Chad. I hit a jewel. You know, I'm on my dad's boat. I have one, you know what, the, the, the big one is those big swans, the inflatable swans. Feels like every hot girl has a photo on an inflatable swan. What is that? It's huge now. Everybody's got to, one person did it, they liked it, and now everybody's got to do it. Sheep. Something about really unfunny gags. You used to see these on the dating apps. It'd be like a girl with the mustache glass. You yes. Know? Everyone's got the mustache. One. Wouldn't it be funny if I had a mustache? Not really. No, no. That's offensive to, to trans people, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, it's just you're not right. funny. It's just like, you're like, all right, if you had a mustache. Well, we did a weird flip, I think 2006, where quirky was somehow funny. I know. It's just quirky. 
And we had it in the nineties. It was the Jenny McCarthy was considered funny. Like, no, she's just shitting or <laughs> farting or picking her nose. That's not comedy. She's just a goofball weirdo. But it's not. She's not funny. Yeah, that was a that was a tough run. Oh, bad run. She had an MTV sketch show. Yes, yes. <laughs> like what MT- the fuck? MTV was like Jenny McCarthy, the logical. Oh. She's shown her tits in magazines. <laughs> she should be the next. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. She's the next Mel Brooks over here. And look, yes, I jerked off to the sketch show. But <laughs> did you it, really? Yeah, I thought she was a, a hot number back in the day. Yeah, I mean, her tits were always out. She was like a ditzy hot blonde. No, she, I definitely thought she was hot as a kid. Yeah. But she's gone off the deep end now. Yeah. Anti-vax or anti-autism? Anti-vax, Anti-vax, I think, yeah. yeah. Before, before corona. Yeah, I don't think she's a nice person. Nah, nah. And I think she fucked Jim Carrey up a little bit, I think. Did she? Yeah. They, Did they date? They dated. Damn, that's got to be rough because he's got he's to pretend she's funny. Oh! That's got to be. Oh, you're right. Like, he's bringing heat all day. <laughs> and then she's like, <laughs> and he has to be like, it's good. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. You did. You are hot. You are hot, and you farted. So right. That's, <laughs> right. That is. I get that. That goes against type. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And if anybody's like, "You're not funny," she's like, "Uh, Jim Carrey said I'm funny." <laughs> like, oh, you mean the guy you're fucking? <laughs> that's a tough one. Man. Yeah, that is tough. He was. That was peak Jim Carrey. Too. I know. That was nine. Like Jim Carrey in the nineties. It's. I rewatched The Mask recently, and like that's a great example of a not very good movie where with a guy is so good, so good that you're just like, it's it's worth. It. Yeah, that's true. And a young uh, Cameron Diaz. First movie. First movie. She really fought her way into that when I heard. Really? Uh-huh. And, she, boy, it paid off. What, what do you mean? How'd she fight her way in? Well, like, she wouldn't take no for an answer. She would, like, I don't it's know. It's okay when a woman does it. <laughs> Woo! But, yeah, give that a go. Sorry, goog. that was the Pample Moose talking. <laughs> Pample Moose. <laughs> was it? Pampalone? Pampalone, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what a Pample Moose is, but I like it. Sounds like an old private jet in the 40s. <laughs> he flew here on a Pample Moose. What's isn't, it, a... isn't it just Spanish for grapefruit, Pample Moose? What is it? I don't know. I've never heard of Pample Moose. Help. I think they're an indie band in Brooklyn. I think that's the Grapefruit LaCroix, if I'm not wrong. Pample Moose? Can we look that up? What is it? What is the translation? Oh, nice. Well, I'm not cultured. I just have had that LaCroix. Uh, Luxembourg. Wow, I didn't know they had their own language in Lux. Pample uh-huh. moose. That's what we're doing right now, brother. Yeah, pam- we're pample moose, and it's a verb now. What a, a decent racial slur couple of pample moose in the pool. <laughs> Fucking pample moose cut me off in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, no one's more racist than behind a wheel. You know, it could be anybody, and they, yeah. they cut you off. You're like, of course it's a Mexican. Okay. <laughs> like, that's not even a stereotype, but whatever it is, you go with it. It's right. fucking, it's true, man. I used to have a bit about like whatever, whatever person you pull up to, you're like, I knew it. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. There was like uh I mean, I'm a terrible fucking driver, though. No, oh, true. Have you been in a car with me? I have. I never got in because I heard the story. Yeah, I'm pretty bad. I heard. I heard Colin Quinn and David Tell. David Tell is horrible. Mm. New York people are bad drivers. Yeah, yeah, that's true. When you think with Brooklyn, though, he would be all right. New York people that grow up in the city are not good drivers. Yeah, that's any people true. that grow up in any city are pretty bad. Right, right. Well, I got to tell you, I didn't have any spots last night, so I texted Liz like, "Hey, if you got anything, let me know." She goes, well, you should open for Quinn. That is whatever nice. he's doing the fat black. And I said, I'm in. So 15 minutes in front of Quinn. I got there early. We hung out. I go on. They're a hot crowd. He goes on. And it. I mean, I don't want to blow it out, but I've watched everything he's ever done. His new hour is the best one. What? Best one yet. He tackles everything. It's It's topical. It's current. It's relevant. It's amazing. He hits it from all angles. I can't wait. Yeah, he is he is the best. And uh, oh. if you haven't seen his stuff, it's on Netflix, like Long Story Short or uh, Red State, Blue State. All that stuff is yeah. so Yeah, New so York killer. Story. New York Story is incredible. That one's incredible. I saw that on a date years ago live at the Cherry Lane Theater. I think I saw it with my mom, and we had a family emergency, and she, like, walked out. And it was from the back, so she had to, like, walk all the way through during his opener. <laughs> It was like brutal. I'm sure I was like, my mom is fucking up Quinn's opening right here. <laughs> this is terrible. Remember the story where uh, Mateo Lane 
I don't know, he had like yeah. he had to take a shit or diarrhea and he had to walk out and Quinn clocked it and he said he they brought it up like for five years after. Yeah, I remember that goddamn poor Mateo. That's uh, yeah, Quinn is that. That's good to hear because man, if you haven't watched this stuff, you're missing out. Like literally, everyone I tell to watch it is like that was incredible. Yeah, if you can get past the mumble mouth and the marble mouth, I mean, he's he's the guy. He's the best. He gave the he uh. So Tom Papa married our our good friend Rachel Feinstein and her her husband Pete and Tom Papa, a great comic, marries them. Then Quinn comes up right after Tom Papa to give a speech and he goes, your your minister energy is really infuriating everybody. <laughs> and it kills. And then Tom goes on after him and goes, you're right. I should have mumbled through my speech oh. like you did. And that killed. It was like, man, comics at a wedding just fucking hitting each other. Yeah. It, it was great. Two pros, two vets. Yeah. And that's a big gig because you're in front of so many comics. It's brutal. Yeah. So it's almost like it. open mic energy, except, yes. they're, except they're rooting for you. Right. No one wants a wedding bomb. Good point. Good point. Yeah, if it's funny, they will laugh. They'll give it to you. Whereas an open mic, if you're funny, they might not give it to you. We've what, all been there. What were you last weekend? I'm opening another pumple moose. Get a pumple moose. I was in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and it was great. What Were you Tempe or Stand Up Live? There's a new place called Copper Blues Live. I fucking canceled. At the beginning of the pandemic, I canceled on that one. Well, if I'm you go back, you're going to sell out because we had a million Alkies there. Oh, yeah. I love it. It was great. When Sam coming? I never I never miss a week, blah, blah, blah. This so. is a fun podcast. Oh, yeah. New York, you baby. You got to subscribe to the new YouTube if you're listening yes. now. If you're listening to this on the podcast app. Or if you're watching here, glad you're here. But you got You got to get on this uh, new YouTube channel. Thank you uh, to Matt at Gotham Studios for setting that up. Salacuse, our main man, in studio with us now. Oh, yeah, on the ones and twos. And, uh, hey, if you got any packages, send them to Gotham, 3938 Street. 39 West 38th Street, Gotham Studios. Send them here. Uh, 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 yeah, and... Uh... <laughs> yeah, great... Great comedy town. Phoenix gets forgotten as one of these comedy towns, but yeah, one of the best crowds. I mean, dark shit. They don't get upset. They love it. They root for it. They get a little hammered. Oh yeah, but a uh, great time. And it's like a hundred. It's like the milk capital there. of the world. Oh, too. the Cougars. West Coast Florida, leathery hot, big fake jug. That's what I said. I said the the. The flag of Scottsdale should be a MILF in a golf cart going to Pilates. <laughs> I mean, it is crazy out there. It's just dentist wives, you know, yeah. with nothing to do but do uh, yoga and sit by the pool. Damn. Yeah, there are. I remember I did a gig once in Scottsdale and a guy had a stroke during my set. What? Yeah, brutal. Heat stroke? No, a stroke. Whoa. Yeah, I was. I That's was, a bomb. I folks. was at. <laughs> Holy shit! Well, I was at Stand Up Scottsdale, which like so we used to do this oh, club. God. Have I ever told you this? No, but you got to tell them about Stand Up Scottsdale. Well, this club. All right, if you don't know this club, Stand Up Scottsdale is run by this guy Howard Hughes, who was a super nice guy. I think he was an ex marine. Yes, that's right. And he was super supportive of comedy, but he would get fucked up. Yeah, and, oh yeah. And he would do time. He would do like twenty five minutes, thirty minutes before you. Oh yeah. And it was like dabble. It was. Shooting back and forth between like edgy, like Bill Hicks type shit, and then being like, You're not drinking. You need to drink. Yeah. We need to make money for our venue. <laughs> so, this place was on Bar Rescue, the yes. John Taffer show. Yes. So, and... put them on the map. <laughs> it's crazy. So, they have this incredible venue, and John Taffer, I guess, tears it to shreds and mm -hmm. is like, What the fuck? You're an idiot. You're not good at running it. Yeah. And he's like, I'll turn it around. I get there, and I remember being like, You know, it's a beautiful room. Oh, yeah. You know? And the shows were pretty good, but then I end up coming back, and no one tells me this. He just picks me up, and I'm like, oh, it's a different hotel. He's like, oh, it's connected to the new venue. And I was like, new venue? Uh-oh. It's the back of a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. So I'm like, well, these are going to be different shows than I anticipated, you know? And we get there, and uh, first night, he gets, like, blackout drunk. Yeah. You know? like, and he was like, he's like, just, I got to get out of here, my, uh, my, <laughs> my girlfriend. I was like, dude, you got to chill for a second. Yeah. So he stays for a little bit. He goes on, and it's like, all right, yeah. not it doesn't go great. Whatever. He's by the way had a stroke before. I know this. Oh, about really? Him. Yeah. He like, but he got it from like cocaine and Red Bull. He didn't. Uh, it's not like a stroke story where you're like, you poor bat. It's like you're an idiot. Right. Right. You did too much coke, and uh, 
I'm on stage and I'm doing pretty well. And this guy like knocks over a beer. I was like, I guess I'm killing pretty hard. And she goes, no, he's having a stroke. Oh. And I was like, oh shit, stop the show. I still, I yell, someone call an ambulance. So Howard uh, calls an ambulance. Then I was like, we got to do something. And Howard takes, he thinks do something means go on stage oh. and do shtick. Uh, <laughs> so he's talking to the guy like, so where are you from? I'm like, he's having a stroke. Uh. You're going to force him to do <laughs> back and forth. So... Give us a place we should be. <laughs> ah, hospital. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the ER. Oh, my God. That's insane. Brutal. And then. Uh, How far in are you? Because like 20 it... minutes. Oh, right in the gooey middle. Brutal. And they were good. Uh, oh. I mean, he wasn't. He was in no, bad shape. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> they basically call an ambulance. And the guy, he gets taken out and gives us like a thumbs up that he's oh. OK. We're like, thank God. And then. Howard's like, what do you want to do? I was like, well, I got to finish. I can't, like, they're all here still. Yeah. So I give it, like, I was like, let's give it five minutes. I start riffing. I just start shitting on Howard for, like, ten uh, minutes straight. <laughs> and it's crushing. Like, I can't follow material. It's killing so hard. Right, right. Because they're all like, this guy's a fucking idiot. Wow. But he did, to his credit, he took it. Yeah. And he was... He always was a good guy. He would just get too drunk. Sure, but I think that's a pro move. I mean, as the owner of a club, you got to respect... Even though you're taking the hit, the crowd is happy. A guy had a stroke, and they're still laughing. I mean, that's that's a credit to you. I think uh, you got to tip the hat to that New York headliner. He also, so he's on Bar Rescue, and then he's on the Bar Rescue Redemption show, so it's live. Oh, and they're wow. like, all right, we want to see how the bar is looking now, you know, after we helped it. It's like yeah. They revisit it. And, and it was like, Howard's not doing a good job, whatever. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> His nose is bleeding everywhere. <laughs> Well, they, I just remember how John Taffer, you know, that show Bar Rescue was like, I'm not going to insult this man. He's a Marine. He's an American hero. And you know, something bad is coming after that. Yeah. You know, he's building yeah. Up. He's like, but this <laughs> man doesn't know how to run a bar. And and I just remember Howard getting in his face, like being tough, getting in his face. And one of his uh, bar managers stands up and goes, Howard, no. <laughs> <laughs> they just kept replaying Howard no uh, that was like the go to commercial and we're back Howard no <laughs> wow you gotta pull that up I mean if I bet if that episode it, it's brutal it's gotta be on YouTube but it's like I was like oh yeah I play and I always liked the guy honestly no, he was always great a, guy. he was always a decent guy but uh, those are some memories I'm like god oh, damn oh yeah I did that club like three times because they would have me when no one else would and for he, sure he was always a tough nut every time but he looked great he, he looked He great. was like 45 when I met him, and he looked like 28. And he had a really hot, cool girlfriend. Yes. Who was like a Pilates instructor. Yes, exactly. I hope he didn't blow it, because she was cool. Yeah, that's uh, true. But yeah, he did. He is a handsome guy, and he's in really good shape. Great shape. Full and, head of hair, cool like cool outfits, weird glasses. Yeah, and you're right. Like, no one else would have it. And he really appreciated us. Like, I don't yes. remember. I remember I do a late night set, and he'd be, he would like promote it. Yeah, you that's know? right. He that's was a right. Good, he was the type of guy who like I felt like this is gonna sound fucked up, but I felt seen. Yeah, <laughs> you know? no. I, well, back in the day, you took anything, <laughs> any like compliment, any like booking meant the world to you because it was so bleak. If he got like a good partner to yeah. run a place with, it would be good because he really did care. He needs a yin and a yang. He's the fun, crazy guy. I'll go on stage. I'll do drugs, whatever. He need the the business guy. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, that's not the business guy. <laughs> no, no, no. I remember he was so so savvy business wise that he wouldn't book a feature so they'd have like six open mics hang open micers hang out in the green room and he would go you you and you do six minutes and he called a guest set so he didn't have to pay him i hope he never hears this we love you howie we do love i mean you know what he really was a good guy yeah yeah good guy smart guy cool I mean, guy yeah weird guy but so the weekend uh, was killer copper blues is awesome oh dude great sold out of merch in like the first show and a half damn like, killer crowds really like grateful to see you you know they know we it's a cross country travel for us and just good good guys good hang fun couples great time it's looking like november for phoenix for me if you're if you are asking when i'll be there so i will be there by uh, the way that john taffer was terrible that guy's a tough guy He's not easy. Yeah, I mean, I've seen him go up to like, you know, some guy had a jazz club in Harlem and a big black guy, and he was like, "You suck. <laughs> you, you're a shitty businessman. Your 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 food sucks. Your wife's fat. You're ugly." And the guy was like, "I'm gonna kick your ass." And he's like, "Do it, do it." I'm like, "This guy's got balls." Or he knows, like, "Hey, I'm on TV and I got eight security guys behind me." 
Well, it's also like, you're just, you know that it's going to get publicity. He punches him in the face. He's like, good, I'll get fucking. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He's a big dude, too. Yeah, he is a big guy. It's kind of like Gordon Ramsay. He says some shit. I'm like, damn, man, this guy's got feelings. But then you see his TikTok with his daughter, and you're like, yeah, he's probably a good dad. <laughs> I mean, he does seem like an asshole. That's some people, it's like, you know what? Simon Cowell really popularized being the asshole. You're right. And especially with British guys, they get away with murder. I know, but I know. Like, it's like every show just was like, well, this is, anytime something succeeds, they're like, well, this will be our model. This is an archetype. And then it became the asshole, the the uh, the guy who keeps it real, yeah. the kindly woman, like yes. that was that the cool was black guy. <laughs> it's yeah, like, I remember at the comic strip, the comedy club where I started started at, they did that for the auditions. Oh, is that right? They were like, well, the guy who was the booker, he's like, I'll be the asshole. Yeah. And I'm like, you're just fucking with a like. This is such a low level. At least like Simon was fucking with people on TV, and yeah. it was a show. This is just for you. <laughs> right, right. That's true. I remember watching American Idol in college when it was like new and the biggest show on TV. And I'd be sitting in like a girl's apartment and they all loved him. They were like, he's so hot. He tells it like it is. He's British. He's mean. They loved him. I thought he was gay. Nah. <laughs> Not gay. He, uh, British. Yeah. Anytime, yeah, it is. It was a bold move too to rock the muscle shirt when yes. you're not, when you're not, when you're not like really that in shape. That's true. He had some some guns though. I th yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, if that dude doesn't have a physical trainer, what are you doing with your money? When you're worth yeah. that much money, if you don't have a dude helping you, good point. That's it's weird when guys have huge. Like I remember I rewatched Whiplash and J.K. Simmons has huge guns in it, which yeah. I guess adds to the dominance of you know his whole character is about like he's fierce that character. yes exactly that's a great movie great movie i, I love God, how much love you love movie. movies oh dude i just rewatched serpico you gotta see it i haven't seen serpico ever isn't oh, that crazy it's like talk about the quintessential new york movie i mean salicuse wouldn't be here without serpico <laughs> it's incredible and Pacino, my God, Pacino. He rules, man. Oh, especially 70s Pacino. Godfather, yeah. Dog Godfather Day 2, Afternoon. Dog Day Afternoon, yeah. come on. Dog Day Afternoon is So good, so good. Attica, Attica. Yeah, and it's good. they really used New York back then. It was, like, very Brooklyn-y. Yeah, something about those old movies that, like, old New York movies, and I kind of like, like, think about even movies like, jeez, uh, why is this? movie midnight uh cowboy oh yeah we're, we're, they could go dark they went dark you're right and and like a, an ending didn't have to be super no like i hate to give spoilers here but ending didn't have to be super upbeat like right i like old movies where they could just end in a shocking way and you're like that's the that's the movie yeah good good call it's funny you say that because i'm a big tarantino nut and he was just on rogan so i listened to that immediately and he said the 70s was Amazing for I movies. Heard, I heard him on Bill Maher. And he oh said, yeah, he said the same thing about the like in in sixties. Yes, like, and then the eighties were like happy, you know, Karate Kid, and it's got to have a happy ending, and it's families and suburbs. And then the nineties was like Pulp Fiction and all these dark. Nineties were good. Great, great. You know, Saving Private Ryan or like Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights. Fargo. Fargo. Come on. Yeah. L.A. So. Confidential. Exactly. Great even movie. even like the Matrix was like, whoa, what is Matrix this? Matrix is great. Yeah. So uh, he, I think it might happen with comedy. I mean, we kind of went into this weird way with comedy, quirky and cutesy and safey and all that. And I think maybe we're going the other way. We made a good point too with some of the we always think of the sixties as being the greatest decade for film, but then like it's not till the late sixties. It's True. like Bonnie and Clyde and Graduate are like late like sixty eight or something. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. And then. 70s it just got crazy like peck and paw and all this other shit but uh 70s is is the 70s the best decade for film i think so i think so but when is midnight cowboy six late 60s yeah, yeah. late 60s so that's really when it flipped Damn. all right we're geeking out but sorry guys watch... we, we go into movie rex a lot i got a good rec for you okay hit me mayor of east town ah i watched the first uh two today it's a or yesterday it's amazing Great show. Great show. I mean, the woman is a huge coos, but Kate I Winslet. Think, yeah, but she's. I guess she's been through a lot. Like she's like got zero appeal. Like if you knew her, you'd be like, oh, this lady sucks. Yeah, but that's what I like about it. Uh -huh. How many how many schlubby male PIs do we see? That was, I can't think I of one schlubby that. female PI in film. Can you? Man, I think that's exactly her pitch. Yeah. Where's the Where's the female? Ah, uh, <laughs> but. 
Never that's saw a it. Two, that's a twofer. Yeah. This is just her. Have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, you have? Okay. Do you like it? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's like, really well done. It's realistic. Yeah, and and that's the whole thing is that she doesn't, and she's still attractive though. I mean, she's oh still, yeah, it's oh, like yeah. that's the thing where you're like, there aren't that many female roles like this where you see a really uh, purposely, you know, as you said, coos, coos, is yeah. that the word? Yeah, well, she's she's kind of mean. She's, you know, like the new guy Zabel coming yeah. in. He's like, all right, I'm just trying to be your friend. Like, take yeah. it easy. And you're, I, I get it. Her well, she son, clearly hasn't been through therapy. Yeah, yeah. Her <laughs> son, I don't want to say too much, but her son is dead and divorced and all this shit. She, you know, she's fucking up a case. So she's got a lot on her plate. But uh, yeah, it's the first time seeing a woman in that position. Yeah, you don't see. I think about like every male PI, like Columbo, schlubby as hell. Yeah. You know, like like almost every Kojak's not exactly a looker. You know, right? right. <laughs> like every male PI is kind of like. You know, I'm even trying to think of like classic female detective. I think like a Mariska Hargitay from Law yeah. and Order, and she's super uh, hot. Other than that, it's uh Angela Lansbury and Murder She <laughs> Wrote. You know, not exactly, not not a lot of edge for on, sure. She's like a you know tea time at a typewriter. For sure. But yeah, you're right. You're right. And then she fucks the guy and he's like, let's get dinner. And she's like, oh, it was a one time thing. Guy Pierce. Yeah, man. They, they uglied him up. He was a hunk. Oh, he, I think he looks pretty good. What? With the bad ba- gray. Oh, man. I don't know. I mean, he, he's. Hey, man. He's great like actor. 50 something. I mean, I, okay. That, how, how old is Guy Pierce? Look at him in Memento and then look at him now. It's it's a train he's wreck. Had a good, he's had a good career. Great career. LA Confidential, Memento. 53. That's pretty good. I thought he was 78. He looks like 78. Like Mark what, Twain name in that one thing. one 78-year-old who's got a head of hair like that? <laughs> he looks like uh, Ben Franklin in that movie or in that ben show. Ben Franklin? He looks like, nothing like Ben Franklin. <laughs> the hair, the hair. I don't know. He looked like a founding father. It is a hilarious character, the one-hit wonder. It's like it, that that's a, that relationship, you're like, would this have happened? Would like That's what I was going to say. The, that's the only. There's a couple things in the show that I don't love. like that. Where Why would he like her? Well, I just don't even know why they would like each other. Like, they're yeah. just so different. Like, you know, or he's sure. he's kind of this like, he's like, this, my uh, my book just came out. Uh, or, you know, my, my lecture. And she's just like, I've got a murder to deal with. Like, is that is right. that working in any way? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And then I guess she likes him. because She's like, wow, a man is attracted to me and he's a smart guy or whatever. Yeah. But him, I can't figure out. Maybe what he, he likes sees the, in her? Yeah, the brooding. Well, she's attractive. She's attractive, but I th- it seems like he's into more than that about her. I don't know. And there's also, uh, yeah, he likes her. He's, I mean, look, he's an artist. He's damaged. He probably uh-huh. wants to. He probably wants a little damage. Good point. Good point. And the, and it probably keeps things. I mean, he, he has writer's block, right? Failed writer at this point. Yeah. Not failed. He's got his book, but he hasn't written a book in what twenty five years. So he probably like this. Maybe this will give me something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like Oh, wow. Good. Good for her. Good. See, that's the turn. You know, a lot of people will be like, hey, we need a woman in this role, but they'll still want you to be hot. She's like, no, no, we got to go all the way. And I respect that. Yeah, it's it, it makes more sense for the character. Like you see a character normally she would have like six pack app. Right. Would this be in East Town? Would this be? Yeah. Exactly. How this person looked? Yes. Also, she's not Charlize Theroning and uh, Scarlett Johanssoning, where they're like kicking eight guys' ass in a room. It's where real. Like, That's, yeah. I love that. The first scene, she's like limping and she twists her ankle, chasing yes, the guy. It's, yes. like, it's kind of real. Exactly. Which, yeah, I, I like that about it. I, the one I thing agree. I'm not crazy about, like, I love the daughter who plays the, you know, the, the honor student daughter who's with the, at the good school. With the shaved head? She's great. She's the d- girl in Nice Guys. Thank you. I knew oh, Sally. Yeah. She's waiting for me to say it. She's great in Nice Guys. She's even good in this, but the character is just so kind of underdeveloped, I think. Mm. And um, it's like, of course, like, it's, you know, like, all her friends, she's like got like the gay guy, like all the, yeah, I'm yeah. like, do these characters exist in I East know. Town? That felt a little forced. It felt like an HBO exec, like who was in like, an, who like hasn't been anywhere but Los Angeles <laughs> in the last 20 years was like, the daughter's gay, she's got a weird haircut, yes. and and the, the girlfriend's band. gotta be black. Like yes. we need a black girlfriend. And they hit all the boxes with one character, like get it so all did she. with there. What's that? <laughs> <a> oh. <laughs> 
Somebody write that one down. No, but it's it really it really is like you know they had to overdo it yeah, in a way course, where I'm like okay, fine, but it's it's always like. I feel like almost every show now is like, we have to represent everything. Yes, yes, <laughs> which is impossible. Because every time Kate Winslet's not on screen, I'm just like, this show is taking a hit. I agree. She's I agree. the show. She's the show. She is really a great act. It's unbelievable. You believe she's that lady all yeah. the way. That's another thing. Hacks. You watch the show Hacks? Now we're just getting into a TV guide over here. Yeah, yeah. Hacks is good. It's yeah, yeah. really you loved I, it. I can't do any more comedy. It looks great. I just can't do any more stand up. There's in my not life. a lot of stand up in it, which I, I'm with you. I'm with you. But the the Joan Rivers character by Gene Smart, who's also in Mayor, yeah, is so great. good. So good. And like open I opened for Schumer for years, so it's like these weird parallels a lot there, like a powerful, strong, rich woman opener. Uh but the end it's so good. I, I messaged the producer i was like this is great this is really good and she wrote me back like thanks i appreciate it and blah 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 but the end it gets all preachy and there's a message and i feel like it ruined it preachy's tough in any yeah it's a comedy show and i get it there's heart you can have heart but it felt like a forced message and that's when they lost anytime i feel like a joke i'm telling is more message than funny i drop the joke like sometimes a joke is getting more applause and Mm. laughter and you're like that's not a joke that's a fucking point i'm a comedian Jeez, yeah, I do. Ooh. Do you know this bit? Sure. I had a bit where I said it was about uh, freedom of speech. You know what I'm talking about? You remember this bit? What? Well, yeah, I cut it from the roof. I had said something about like uh, how this guy got fired for going on a racist tirade. I'm a little buzz, so I didn't. I should have eaten something. Pample moose. This pample moose. Pardon me. Pardon me, but the pample moose. Uh, <laughs> do you remember the bit? It was like how. A guy will go on like a racist tirade and he got fired because someone videotaped him. Yeah, you can't say anything anymore. I'm like, well, you did say it. Uh, that was a You did say it. Right. Uh, it's like you just thought you should have gotten away with it. That was a bit. And what do you remember the next line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. You said it for the, an hour and a half on the Long Island Railroad. You said the N word for an hour and a half, and he's like, what? What was the next part? Yeah, you did it for you did it for you did it. It is kind of funny. You did it for it's uh, funny. That did, part makes it funny. You did it for an hour and a you did it for a half a Godfather length movie. Yeah. You know? But I don't remember the turn. There was like one more line, but it was it was getting more nods and laughs. Mm, and that's a not a, that's not a joke. You want to laugh with a nod. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It I don't remember how it went, but I it, I cut it out cuz I was like it's mm. it's it's hitting in woke circles, but it's not hitting in the other. I want mm. jokes to hit everywhere. Yeah, here, here. And I felt like it was like a woke point where I was also kind of being because I'm not for the a person losing their life. I don't I don't believe in that. Right. I, I think people I think we don't need to be more accepting, but we should be more forgiving. Like, I've, I've said that. But I do think like in that joke, it made it sound like I was saying, well, fuck him. Right. You did. You know, and. There was a part of me. It's like, what are you thinking? I mean, this was like a real story. I was just screaming the N word at people on the train. Like, you're a fucking idiot. But the fact that like you can never work again is also yeah. like, I think the end was that we're just not going to have racists have jobs anymore. Like, what are we going to do with like we're going to lose so many big industries? You know? <laughs> uh, oh, that's a good angle from it. But it's more kind of like, hmm. I don't remember the exact bit, but I remember I, that's why I dropped it. Uh, Do you have any bits like that ever where they applaud and you're like, fuck this? I did have some. I can't think of them now, but I've definitely had. I had a whole bit about everybody's full of shit. They'll just slap a rainbow sticker on a bazooka and they kill like 80, you know, 80,000 people. But they're like, but come on, I'm inclusive, you know, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe it is a bit. Yeah, there's something there. There's I, something there. Anytime a bit feels like it's getting applause in the setup. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you kind of have a problem. Right, 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 right. Definitely. I, I don't want them. I'm not up there. Like, I, I would never, like, take for granted. Like, they're not here to listen to me, like, like make points. You and, know? and it's easy to agree. It's easy to go, racism is wrong. For or, sure. or uh, you know, murder is bad. And everybody's yeah. like, yeah, it is. The cops murder people. That's bad. Like, oh, yeah. Like, all right, anybody can do this. The talent is the twist. And the turn and the finding the funny and the mining the humor. For sure. It's like when someone goes on stage and is like, I think gay should be allowed to get married. And you're like, <laughs> we're in Manhattan. Like, yeah. did, did you think you were going to get pushback? Right, you know? right. Exactly. Trans people shouldn't be beaten. 
You know, you're like, I know, nobody should be beaten. Get out of here. <laughs> I think it'd be funny if you went the other way and you're That's like, I, funny. I think women should be allowed to vote. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> right, right, right. We're like, yeah, we can vote. And you're like, well, I think that's that's a good thing. Yeah. But tell me why women can't vote yeah. and make that funny. Now we're cooking. Yeah, it's funnier to take something that's wrong. Yeah, of course. That's comedy. Yeah, I, I wish I remember the bit. I, I think once a bit stops working, I just flush it out of my head completely. Daniel Tosh has this great bit. He has a special that doesn't get any love that I think is amazing. Well, you know why. It's on Comedy Central. Uh, like no one watches no one watches <laughs> Good point. No one watches their specials. I thought you were gonna say something horrible. Well, you know why. He did this or that. I'm like, oh, he does a comedy. He fought of a child. That's yeah. why. <laughs> that would still get some hits. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's got this great special and he has this bit about uh how like the positives of nine eleven. Which immediately the audience is like, uh oh. And he makes it work and he tiptoes through it and it kills. And I'm like, that is Artful. That was masterful. That was comedy. Interesting. I have a bit where I defend pedophiles now. Oh. I, I just say, here's what I like about pedophiles. They never complain about my jokes. Like, I've, ne <laughs> I've never had one stand up mid pedo joke and go, enough. Right. You know, right. so I think that I like that angle where it's like, of course I don't really defend of them. Course. But the crowd fucking knows that. Yes, I'm doing jokes. You, <laughs> you know who doesn't defend pedos uh, openly? Pedos. They're scared. <laughs> Yes, exactly. There's no union. <laughs> <laughs> Although they'd have good snacks. That's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like goldfish? <laughs> you know who else likes goldfish? The people were trying to get to attend these meetings with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pedo is also, who's, you know, sometimes you don't want to watch your kids. They'll watch them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I can never get this one bit to work about pedos, about like that afterwards part's got to be rough where they're like. Uh, oh, they're, I love this. I can never get this to work about like which show to watch. The kids like, I want to watch Peppa Pig. And they're like, I'm more of a crown guy. I don't really. Nah, you know, right, right. Never could get that to work ever. Yeah. Talk about like, you know, you have a one night stand and then you have, you realize that you're kind of different. Talk yeah. about how different a pedophile would be with this kid. Like, For sure. like should we get tacos? Kids like, I want graham crackers. Like, oh, graham come on. I need someone with a more sophisticated palate. I just, <laughs> yeah. What do you want to listen to? Led Zeppelin, Raffi. <laughs> oh God. We're sing. We're uh, we're eating tacos. We'll listen to that song again. Yeah. Right. Right. What? Uh, I, I got to give you a peeve here. Please give me a peeve. and maybe a wreck. Although my wreck is so uh, cheesy. I love it. I love a cheesy wreck. All right. Me? Well, first of all, the peeve, and this rolls right into uh, what we're talking about, is the person who makes uh, maybe an off-color, irreverent joke, and the eye you get the eye roll from the guy who knows you're joking, but is still like, I don't approve of this. I had that in the green room. <laughs> Call that person at, mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'd be like, uh, there was a we had a, a, a female host, and she was really funny, Savannah. And uh, I said something, and she was like, oh, sorry, I'm late. I was in the kitchen. I was like, that's where women belong, you know, joking. And the guy rolled his eyes, like the sound guy. And I'm like, you work at a comedy club. <laughs> what are we doing here? I know this gal. We're friends. What are you, crazy? Also, Don't give me the eye roll. Also, I think women – I'm just saying I think women should be gainfully employed. And uh -huh. the kitchen is – a is a place where people can work and it's a hard time to find jobs right now. Right. I like going like really hard. You know, it's, it, I hate those people where you're like, I'm clearly fucking around. I know. I know. And then it's weird that you have certain places. It's all comes back to history. Like if you go, I believe a woman's place is on the stage of a comedy club. People go good for you. But if you go, I believe it, there are places in the kitchen. Be like, Whoa. I'm like, well, what's the difference? What if she loves cooking? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? For sure. Uh huh. Ah. Uh. The eye roll. It's tough when it's a job that isn't as desirable, I guess. I guess that's I guess the message. That's like, it. I believe a woman's place is a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. That's cool. You're like, that's cool. But if it's a, if it's like, I believe a woman's place is a, yeah, cooking is not. <laughs> yes. Mopping up. <laughs> Whatever. But, but the thing with cooking is like this Michelin chefs, this five-star restaurants. Like, it's an honorable job. You're like, look at Bourdain. He's, you know, loved. Yeah. And dead. And dead. Good point. <laughs> and a heroin addict. But it is interesting, whatever, like, like if you got a, a, a calendar in your, your house with tits on it, and they're like, geez, well, all right, you sexist pig. And I'm like, oh, they're trans. They're like, oh, great. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe that could be a bit. It's just funny how it's okay when it's like a, a marginalized thing or whatever. I don't know. It's, it's all very silly. Yeah, there is a you either it's like you're either pervert or you're progressive. You flip it on them real quick. There's something about, uh, 
That's a hot chick. Whoa, easy, creep. That's a hot, fat chick. Hey, all right. Well, this, this guy's open-minded. My bit is I'm something still being shallow. My bit this week is something to do with that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hit no, me. no, it's not close. You okay. want me to do, we'll do your rec first. We'll okay, okay, okay. My rec is dumb, but it's... uh Actually, I, I do it every day, so I shouldn't say it's dumb, but it's not a movie. It's not a song. Morning and night, I think it'll really improve everyone's life. You eat a banana every morning. And plank for a minute every night. Just plank once a night, a minute. I know it sounds like a bitch, but you're going to sit on the couch anyway. You're going to sit on your phone anyway. Sit on your phone while planking, and a minute will fly by. Damn. It hurt. It's good for the core. It's good for the back. It's good for the uh, the spine. Give it a shot. One minute. We are brought to you by Sheath Underwear. This keeps your ball off your leg. Two pouches, one for your dick, one for your balls. Keeps the ammo separate from the gun. This is great underwear. I actually use this. This is my girlfriend's favorite underwear. This gets me laid. This underwear. Supportive, sexy looking. I really do. This is my favorite underwear. No, I'm not just saying this. I'm not just saying this because they're paying us money. I really think there's quality underwear. Agreed. Uh, the idea from Sheath came from the founder, U.S. Army soldier Robert Patton, during his second tour in Iraq. Are you guys going to support the troops or what? Support this awesome veteran-owned company whose founder, he's a big comedy fan. He's messaged me. He's a great dude. I know he's messaged you, too. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code DRUNK to get 20% off your first order and Sheath Underwear's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code DRUNK. Get Sheath Underwear and let them support your balls. That's good. A banana and a plank. Banana and a plank. Not the end of the world, and you're already moving in the right direction. And this is very manageable. Bananas are cheap. Put them on top of the fridge, and then you go, ah, shit, I'm going to bed. 60 seconds. Knee or elbows and toes. It's funny how many exercises are named after uh, ways you could die. Ooh. Like you walk the plank, you die. What do you call when you, you do those runs? Suicides. Oh, yeah. What else? There's burpee? Herb- no, nah, that's no burpees. good. You could choke on something, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what else? Is there a, a guillotine or a hangman? Yeah, what else is there exercising? Elliptical? Well, you know, it's funny you say that. Is the, uh, the treadmill was invented in England to be a torture device. And no now shit. it's, uh, you know, we do it willfully. I mean, barely. Yeah, it is a Fucking nightmare. Fucking hate exercising, man. Yeah. It's just so funny that we're like, all right, I got to get my steps in. And they're like, oh, no, they're taking me to the treadmill. <laughs> you know? It's got to be a bit there somewhere. Now we pay for it. Yeah. I wonder, you think people will pay for like other torture devices in the right, future? Right, right. Like maybe, uh, what's the one where you- Where they stretch you, <laughs> you know? And now we pay to get like, a, you know, stretched to yoga. I'm getting to cleanse. What's that? Well, it used to be a waterboard, but they actually, <laughs> it clears you out. Right, right. So. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Great pull, Sally. Good pull, Sally. Uh, and then also, you have like, what's the one? The Brazilian, the dance one? Uh, uh, capoeira. capoeira. What which does is, that mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything, but it used to, it's like, it's, they have these dark origins. Like, capoeira comes from like these Brazilian slaves. They would like disguise it as a dance. So their slave owners didn't think they were doing anything. Mm. And then they turned into a martial arts. So they'd, they'd oh, fuck up their slave owners. Wow. Which is hilarious. So they're just watching like, yeah, they're pretty good dancers, yeah. these slaves. And they just start killing you. I like the idea of that now. Like, I got twerked to death. <laughs> she twerked me. That's how she escaped. <laughs> if I see a woman twerking, though, I'm pretty helpful. Yeah, it is pretty good. Oh, man. It is Crazy. hilarious how much of Instagram or, like, TikTok is just a woman, like, shaking her ass. Or, I like, know. And you're just like, this is your skill? Right, You right. could have picked anything, and you just went with ass. Yeah. And have you tried to twerk? It's oh, God, It's incredibly no. hard. I mean, it's a... you want me to try it? I mean, I can't even do it. It's not even worth the... Let's see you twerk. Ah. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even. Uh, I look good. The, the butt has to like really move so fast that the the fat part of it it can't keep up. I, I don't know. I've I've really studied the the art of twerking. <laughs> it's it's a weird one. Any dance looks easy, and then you're like, that's fucking work. I know. Women dancing is very attractive. It I guess that's not. why strip clubs became a thing. 
man, strip. The older I get, the more I'm just like, I can't get into it. Man. I don't like them either. It's not. For, it's just like I think about the lady, and then you feel like if you're not tipping enough, she's pissed at you, and then you're like, am I getting a cheap? Am I being cheap here? I, I don't know. It's not my thing. No, I'm with you. I, TikTok, Salex, you you nailed TikTok. I'm not even on TikTok, but every what I'm what I've seen I of like it. it. I do. I mean, everybody yeah. likes it, but I just know I'll stare at it for six hours. By the way. TikTok while you plank. That'll solve that. But it's good. It's just women with outfits, like tight outfits going like, ooh, in the mirror or whatever. And you're like, why am I watching this? It's because you want to look at women all day, but you can't stare at a woman in the street because then you're a weirdo, but you're allowed to do it here. Yeah, that's why fucking people who are just like staring at women on public transit, it's like, well, you don't have social media? <laughs> what, are you that's, homeless? That's a good point. Yeah. That's a great point. Ah, now that's double the views. Interesting, yeah. There's something about uh, t it's so hilarious the way you say TikTok while you plank. You're like a cool uh, fitness instructor. <laughs> you're like a cool dad or something. You could, guys, we need to get you guys in shape. Right. But right. remember, you could uh, scroll Twitter while you do this. You could. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to. It's when I got braces as a kid. I remember they were like no sweets. I was like, oh my god! And the lady took me aside. She's like, you can have a piece of cake, but just wash your mouth out after with water. I'm like, I don't live my life like this. But of course, every kid ends up eating, you know, five pounds of cake still. Oh, cake, man. Ah, good band. Cake is a cake is a good band. I love that band. I mean, that's basically our intro, right? Oh yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. What? Uh, give me a. What's your? Oh, your record is oh, a banana. Oh, yeah. and I think. What's your bit? Oh, my bit. Okay. Now, this one needs some work, but I think there's something. I tweeted just the premise, and it got over 100 retweets. So I oh, think nice. there's something here, but I can't crack it. These are almost the hardest kind of bits where it's obvious that it's a bit. So the pressure to make it funny is more, and then I can't think of it. Yeah. You know, when a bit is weird, it's almost easier to think of the, the funny. But uh, when it's good in the setup, it's hard to it's hard to crush that, yeah. that second part because you, you've in some ways peaked it. Joe, oh no, Anthony DeVito has that great joke where he's like, my mom is blind and she's dating a black hairdresser and whatever. And he's like, I've never felt more pressure to write a bit. Yeah, he yeah. He made a bit out of how hard it is to make that a bit. I love that bit. That is genius. But yeah. um, all right, so I was really hung over the other day and I realized the way you are when you're hung over is like a sneak peek into how you're going to be as an old person. You can barely get out of bed. You're shitting water. You're cranky. You're hunched over. You know, you regret everything. And your friends talk about you like you're old. Like, he doesn't remember much. You know? <laughs> and it's kind of getting it's getting chuckles, but uh, it's, not, it's not going where I need it to go. And I try the whole thing about, like, all my friends don't get hung over like I do. I'm a, I'm a mess. Next time I get hung over, I'm going to go to an old folks home and just because I can relate to them, you know, like I was shot at Nam and I was like, I was taken down by shots, too. You know? <laughs> yeah, but again, it's, yeah. it's OK. I We're don't know if it's taken enough. down by shots. Yeah. There's something funny about uh, I mean, this may be too obvious, but the idea of you, you're mumbling slurs like what was that? You're like it was a different time. I don't oh, know. Oh, that's good. Like something about. What I did then, you yeah, know, it was a different time. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you were drunk. Yeah, yeah, that's good. All right, I like that. I was a different person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah, I was a different person then. I've evolved. Yeah, you're only speaking Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're hungover, like you're slower. You have you know energy. You know, you got no strength. You don't want to see your grandkids. How drunk did I get? Oh. Shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to eat. You are you know, how when you're hungover, you're like, I can't eat that. When you're older, you can only eat a few things. So I, I really tried to find a lot of parallels. But And it was I was trying it on stage. It was doing okay, but it wasn't. You know when you feel like, oh, this bit's got legs. Maybe there could be something funny about, like, you're in a diner alone. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah hungover right. and old people. Oh, Early bird. Yes. that's good. That's good. We're you, crossing over. Yeah, you both woke up at 7 a.m. Yeah. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> both can't get it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. You I think both, we got some here. You can't get it up is funny. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wet myself. Uh, mm, smell weird. It needs a big finish, yeah, but 
I'll get there, but yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't crack it all. The, erect, weekend, I the erection is funny. Maybe the erection. The racism is funny. Yeah. The uh, yelling. At, I'm yelling at kids. Like I have a playground next to my house, and I was like, "God, these kids! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're so loud. This racket." I have found myself saying that. Oh yeah. I, yeah. Even birds. I'm like, when I'm hungover, I'm like, God, the tweet, tweet. I used to live right next to a playground too, and I was like, I fucking can't ever jack off. They're always fucking laughing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's a good sign. I would jack it off every day. <laughs> Can't believe I live next to this place. I'm not even allowed in it. All right. All right. What do you got on the bit? Uh, my bit? Yeah, yeah, your bit. I wrote it down. I had some ideas, so I got to write it down because I'm fucking a little out of it now. I just wrote this one on the way here, but I think there's something to this. So I was reading this article on... Uh, it was in the New York Times recently. David Brooks wrote this article about like how if someone's tired, if someone's fired because of the color of their skin, it's racist. You know, if the, if it's because they're a woman, it's it's sexist. Mm -hmm. But there's no recourse for ugly people. That was his whole point. Oh, so I want to kind of go off this point my own way. Yeah, where it's like, you know, like well, I think the problem is like it's because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't be like, oh, I got fired because I'm not attractive. And the judge is like, well, I think you're attractive. And you're like, well, objectively, I'm not good looking. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. The angle, I think, is like you can't you can't put the boss in the stand because that's where it gets weird. It's like, uh, oh, that's good. under oath. Would you bone her? That's good. <laughs> and they're like, well, there's no good answer. If you say no, you get sued. If you say yes, you're fired. Right. Right. That's good. So That's one angle I had. Then I wrote this down. It's like it's called lookism. That's when you when you when you judge someone based on how they look. It's called lookism. Come which on, I'm like, that sucks because that's just the word you use for what you see. Right, right. That's like that's like like that's pretty messed up the way you used your eyes. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like so, this is very the, in the only fetal person stages. who's innocent is the blind guy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They actually they make glasses for this. It's just uh yeah they just oh. put black uh, sleeves yeah. over the <laughs> yeah. eyes. I don't yeah. Know. Uh no you're right the blind guys don't even blind people touch your face oh yeah yeah even blind people are like let me oh shit you know <laughs> yeah uh but then I had a few angles for this I want to go one was I think the more progressive we get the more loopholes there's gonna be for people getting fired in the future like like it's not my fault I got fired you know I'm personality challenged oh like I think there's yeah. something there like how many excuses are gonna be right right oh yeah interesting. You know, like people are gonna get fired from the military. It's just fucked up. I got di I got discharged. You know that I'm fucking bravery challenge. You know. Oh yeah, right, like right. Like how politically correct are we gonna have to be? Yes, yeah. You used to get fired for get being gay. Now it's gonna be everything. It's everything. That's interesting, and as an excuse for everything. Like, so this oh, is my we... turn. I took too long to get here, but this is my turn. Because uh, these are just notes I took. But I'll tell you who's the most inclusive group: drunks. Because drunks see beauty in everyone, right? Sometimes I'm drunk and I look at a woman that sober me didn't find the beauty in, and I pat myself on the back. Yes, right. And I'm like, man, when is the rest of the world going to catch up? Man, that's a that's a big angle. There's something there. That's right? big all because right. we call it beer goggles, but we all we also say, hey, see the beauty in everything. Right. But when I do, you, you see, I got beer goggles. Maybe I'm just open minded. Maybe I'm just, uh, you know, maybe I got a big heart or whatever. That's good. I'm inclusive. Yeah, I'm inclusive. It's not beer goggles. I'm inclusive. Drunk people are inclusive. Yes. This is why we can't, you know, everybody's like, how come alcohol is legal and not weed? Because booze makes, you wouldn't be here without booze. I'm not inclusive when I'm high. Yes. When you're wanna, high, you fucking lock the door. I want to get the hell away from people. That's interesting. Yeah. Something here. I'll crack this. I love this. There's something here. Yeah. I mean, you really, uh, really crack this open there's a lot Did here I? oh yeah oh yeah it's very it's not there yet at all but there's something here well i think another angle could be uh you know looks are subjective but all these other ones aren't like gay black asian man like that's not subjective but looks are so that's the only one where you can't really call someone ugly because like you said somebody will find you hot well beauty privilege is like a thing you know yeah that's that true. is that's like weird that like no one talks about that but if you're like a hot person like you have an you have an easy life of course because nobody wants to go i'm ugly no nobody wants to be that guy who's like i'm calling it i'm ugly is that why they don't march <laughs> yeah yeah and the ugly parade would be the a, ugly you know, parade? nightmare the ugly parade is like yeah i have a joke about the baby march because i have a joke about but there's like a joke about uh 
Fuck. The ugly. Yeah, ugly people don't mobilize because ugly people are like, well, I'm not going to meet anyone there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah, that one makes sense. True. No fat guy they don't walk. Yeah. But here's the turn. They can have a fat guy rascal off. <laughs> they all just take scooters. Just 10 miles an hour. The, the Here's the turn. Sure, it's an ugly parade, but it's not ugly if you're drinking. And you bring it all back around. <laughs> yeah, then we just call it St. Paddy's. <laughs> oh. ah, there, we go. there we go. There we go. There we go. They're ugly. The Irish are ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, you mix. All right. I love the Irish. Redheads are very hot sexy. Irish women are pretty oh, damn hot. Oh, Shiv. The freckles. On, Shiv on a uh, commission. With she's, su- a, she's Australian, isn't she? I think she is, but they could be Irish in Australia. Yeah, no, maybe. But I mean, what? Do you a, see the trailer for season three? No. Season three of Succession is coming, dude. I cannot wait. It's that's about my. Time. That's probably my favorite show. You got me hooked. It took me two tries, but man, once I got in, I, I really was in. pushed you. And guess man. what else I pushed you to watch that you haven't watched yet? Oh, I gotta do it. I gotta do Rick it. Rick and Morty. Yeah, yeah. Give yeah. it a shot. You're I, will it. It. I will so do good. it. It's so good. Um, dude, yeah, Succession is the best show. The best. The best. Even that that theme song. I would be dancing in the living room. Oh, bling, so bling. good. I've watched it. I think I've watched it all twice. Yeah. It's just so fucking think, watchable. I think I have too. Yeah. Very adult. It's very, um, I don't want to say subtle because it's not subtle, but it's like, it's the perfect amount of action in a show. It's like not Game of Thrones, but it's not fucking Downton Abbey. It's like, I just You're love right. it. And it's fucking funny. It's funny. It's but real. It, it is arrested development as a drama. Oh. You're right. It's like it's rich people. It's rich people who are fucked up, who are conniving and getting trying to get what they want. And it's a family who keeps kind of dicking each other over. Yeah. Wow. That's a great review. Arrested uh, Development for or for a drama. You're right. Oh, McKay. McKay. He was McKay just on, the uh, best. He was on Kevin Hart's podcast. He was on my basketball podcast. podcast. Yeah. yeah. He's the best. How was? Oh yeah, I think we talked about that already. But yeah, he seems well, like the coolest. I love him. He's yeah. great. What? Uh, Everyone's got a podcast now. Conan everyone... pulls out a show to do a pod. Kevin Hart has a pod. Obama has a pod. Obama's got a pod with Springsteen. <laughs> Isn't that the? What is this? Uh, it's this Rush Hour two or another forty eight hours here? Is That's Trump going to start one with Ted Nugent? <laughs> <laughs> the hell's next? <laughs> Yeah, right. That would be kind of entertaining. That would be a great <laughs> pod, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Trump's new segment. All right. We in this segment we rank women based on their looks. <laughs> five, four, five. <laughs> and every time he talks, Nugent hits <laughs> hits a riff. It's called the Golden Pony. <laughs> oh man, that would be good. I have not. I've never. I should probably listen. I'm kind of curious, but I just I'm like I don't give a shit. What Obama? Yeah. I'm kind of curious. I think Obama was good, and I don't want to ruin it, you know, because it's going to be like, hey, this is Barack Obama, and he's all dignified and integrity, and then he's like, Dollar Shave Club. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you got to get on it. He, I listened to uh, him on Bill Simmons' podcast, and they were just talking basketball, and it was kind of cool. Oh, really? It's cool to hear. It's cool to have a president who who is like into the NBA. Yeah, that is pretty great. It was kind of fun. That's pretty great. I mean, we haven't had any fun with a president since Clinton did the sax on Arsenio, <laughs> you know, and that, the sack. That wasn't the only time he was using his fingers in the nineties. <laughs> Guy was everywhere. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Like Trump would be Trump's great because he would only compliment athletes that were nice to him. Oh, really? He'd be like, Tom Brady is one of the best winners. I'm like, you guys are just friends. <laughs> right, like, right. Like he's like, really, his ego was so big. He'd be like, I'll like you if you tell me you like me. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true. He was really biased <laughs> against. And Biden, you're like, this dude doesn't watch any sport. No, maybe golf, maybe, maybe a Matlock. Yeah, and that, but that's it. <laughs> right, right. Oh boy. Hopefully he makes it through the whole presidency. <laughs> you never know. And it's getting a little weird with the speeches and the the. the well, you the saw flubs. him get down on one knee with that woman who had all those kids. Did you see that thing? No. He got down on one knee, and you're like, "That's a fucking, that's a bold move for a man his age to do wow. on camera." Because wow. like, I get down on one knee, it might not be a graceful right. pop back up. Right. But wow. But when you're pushing eighty and you get down on one knee. 
That's bananas. That's fucking, that's a lot. I can't believe he pulled a Kaepernick at this age. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Biden, what is he thinking? I, I can't believe the dog outlived him. Well, he got in shit for this, too, because <laughs> he got in shit because you get down on one knee. It was almost like he was being like, wow, you've given birth so many times. Uh-huh. But, <laughs> but they were like, well, that's not very feminist that you like think like, oh, I have to get down on one knee for this woman. You're oh, like, yeah. Can people do anything without people just getting? I know. Relax, everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Maybe he was like, that was his way of being like, I bet your pussy hurts. Let me let my knee hurt for a second. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I have some solidarity with you? Right, right. A knee for a knee or a knee for a <laughs> labia. I don't know. What the hell's it? My mom gave birth twice, tore the vagina butthole bridge. Oh, nice. Twice. Yeah. So I can't imagine. What did she give birth? Eight times, you said? I think this person was, you look it up, I think it was 12. 12? Bi- just look at Biden knee. I mean, that undercarriage must be just ruined, yeah. like, like, a, like a fucking skyscraper in Miami. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> right, sorry. Can we, can we wait till all the bodies are discovered uh, before we do this one? Well, by the time this comes out, they'll be found, <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Woo, I'm that trying one, to keep it topical. That was crazy because it was like, uh, I, th- I don't know the exact numbers on this, but the condo in Miami, it's like, they inspect buildings, I think, every 40 years, and this one was like 39. Oh. So they were going to inspect it the next year. So I got an idea. 39 years. There you go. How about go. we do it then? There you go. Is that crazy? Wow. They inspect the woman every 20 years. All right. But <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my point is, at, as, as when a woman- You had the joke with him down, and it made me laugh. When a know. woman is in, her, at her, in Miami at 39, they've already given up, is what oh, I was there saying. there we go. Yeah, but yeah. condemned. Thank you. Man, I, I, I've been drinking Popple Boost. This is, this is good. Yeah, it's not bad. I think bad. you're going to like what I bring in next week. Okay. You've inspired me. All right, a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar. What are we going to do, man? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, do we go short? I'm the booze. No, we're good. Should we pl- let's plug Dave? Good idea. Hit him. Hit him. I got. Uh, this comes out. Into all right. So let oh, me do. Okay. So all right. I'll be in Nashville this weekend. Uh, Zanies the twenty third through the twenty fifth. I hope you come out. Uh, Brokerage Comedy Club. In uh, Belmore, New York, July thirtieth uh, and thirty first. Good room. Uh. Lex, I'm bringing great comics with me. I'm bringing Dina uh, Hashem to that. I got Ron on Hirschberg, who's Ooh. a killer with me the following weekend in Lexington, Kentucky. Hell yeah. Uh, the 5th through 7th. Then in August, I've got uh, Kansas City, Missouri. I've got Portland, Oregon. I've got Royal Oak, Michigan. And then September, Boston, Philly, Millersville, fucking uh, all over. Uh, Moon Tower for Austin. It's going to be, it's gonna be oh, bonkers. Nice. St. Louis, Helium. All at samuel.com slash shows every fucking week we're doing this. I'm I'm grateful to be back out. I know. It's nice. The road is good. People are loving comedy again, which is a, a real treat. Uh, I'm at the Philadelphia Helium, one of my all-time favorite clubs. That's going to be a hot one. Top five. Yeah, easily, easily. Then Helium Buffalo, that'll be fun. Dayton Funny Bone, Appleton and Skyline, Arlington Improv, Brea Improv, Albany Funny Bone, West Palm Beach, Comedy Connection, Comedy on State. Did you do that yet? Uh, by the time this is out, yes. <laughs> okay, well, I want to can't wait to hear about that. I'm also at Zanies in Nashville, yeah. Rochester, Richmond Funny Bone, Portland Helium, all kinds of days. MarkNormanComedy.com. Love it, man. Check it out. Get on the Patreon. Email us at uh, we might be drunk pod dot or at Gmail and uh, any packages. Oh, Patreon. We open this real quick. Oh, Patreon okay. dot com slash we might be drunk pod. Yeah. And the new YouTube channel. Make sure Ooh, you get on that. Good call. Matt, do we have a, a address for that that we're gonna use? We don't know it yet. All right, but just we'll post it in our stories on Instagram, and uh, I'm sure you'll find it. Just right, it's pretty easy to oh, find. This is two pack. We got a package, and then uh, and then uh, yeah, keep keep emailing us, keep listening. We're gonna open this package on air before we leave. Let's hope it's not weird. It's gonna be like a cease and desist. All right, here we go. Wow, this could be interesting. Oh, we should say we're starting a bar here. So, uh, we're you have any building bar a items? bar. So, you want to send us anything? Wow, what is this? I don't know. Weird. Is that Everest? 
Or is that Rainier? Okay, okay. That looks like a rattlesnake. I'm confused. Maybe this is a, a riddle. No is note. There a note. No note. No okay. note. So yeah, and you can remember when you mail us stuff. Uh, it's at Gotham Studio, 39 West, 38th Street in New York City. Should we? Who should they address it to, Matt? God, what? yeah, just got them and they'll. The hell? What is this? You sending us your screensaver? Oh. <laughs> what is this shit? I think it's supposed to be bar artwork. Oh, all right, bar work. Another, uh, another mountain, hey? We are on repeats already. I don't, I don't, I don't understand the snake. I'm flattered that you sent us a gift, but I don't understand the snake exactly. You sure this is for us? <laughs> what the fuck? Is there a little girl's pigtail in here too? Is this a ransom? What the hell is this? Mark shit? and Sam's drunks, and there's no note. A there's note nothing? would suffice. Maybe it's in the Patreon. Maybe give that a look for an email or something. Oh boy, this feels like uh... oh, it's like leathery too. The picture. Oh wow. Maybe there's a photographer out there. I mean, look, they're cool photos. I'm not like gonna knock on them. I what just... movie? What's in the box? Thank you. <laughs> Her, your wife's pretty little head. Yeah. Is that right? All right. John Doe's got the upper hand. Feel that? That's kind of weird, right? Ooh, that was nice. What do you think? This is nice stuff. Whoever that sent this, uh, I guess it's for bar art. Canvasonsale.com, Northwest 107th Street, Miami, Florida. All right, well, maybe this was stuff that was in the condo. So is this just supposed to be like American art or some shit? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. Is that Everest? Where is Everest? The Alps? No. Andes? That's a mint. Where the hell is Everest? It sounds American, but it ain't. It is. No, isn't it? Where is it? <laughs> I fucking read a book on Everest, and I, I'm oh forgetting. Oh, boy. I read that fucking, the guy who wrote <laughs> Into the Wild. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Wait, Into the Wild is Everest? No, but the oh. same author who wrote that book. Uh, I fucking read both of those, and I'm like. Great movie. Great book. I think it's in Nepal. I think you're right, but now you got to look it up. K2. K2. The ski gear. Nepal, you're right, Nepal and China. Wow, it's Asian? Yeah, that, there was a, a crazy book on it. The guy who wrote Into the Wild wrote it, and it's like Sherpas and people not making it, and people, yeah. it's crazy. Now they have Wi-Fi on Everest. Fun fact. True story. I don't. Because you want to be on TikTok when you're taking <laughs> in the world's greatest view. <laughs> well, you got to post the gram. <laughs> it's not the tallest mountain, though. I think you're right, but everybody talks about Everest. It's kind of like how, you know, we talk about this comic, but he ain't the funny. All right, good shit. Well, this was a hot episode, guys. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening, and uh, keep uh, keep on keeping on. And keep on drinking. What do you got? It's tall. Nah, all right, fine. It's tall. It's yeah, tall. Yeah, one of the parts of the book is they could see the top, but the weather was fucked up. It was like crazy. Wow. So they were like, well, you're going to die if you make So you imagine making it all the way up there, and they're yeah. like, this is probably a bad idea to get to the absolute top. Oh, God, that's crazy shit. But it's crazy. It was just people who have enough money to like have a Sherpa. Like You, ha you make that's enough it. money to just be like, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just pay you to take me up. Right. What do, both of those career both those lives are so weird to me yes one of them is like it's my job to help it could be like some fucking financier who's yeah. just like i want to see the top of everest and some sherp is like i'm kind of in this for the love of the game but you're <laughs> yeah they couldn't be more I different i didn't know i was a part of some rich douchebag's bucket list but, yeah uh, but he's getting paid handsomely i'm sure the sherp is the real hero because he's done eight times yeah instead of once for the for the photo op it's badass pretty badass and they'll get no love by the way, if we're doing, uh, this is a horrible idea for a sketch, mountains on dating apps. You know, you got uh, K2, hey, very tall, getting laid. Uh, <laughs> All right, turn the camera off. I've been drinking. You know, then you got some other, uh, the Andes. Oh, you say you're 3,000 feet. You're only 28, you know. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, Rockies. Right. Joke was Rocky. We might be drunk. We might be drunk. As long as we are hanging out, you know we might.
can't be drunk. Raise a glass, let's talk shit. Head peeps, Rex, and a bit. Maybe drunk. We might be drunk. Yeah.